Seventh grade lesson 6.3 is writing two-step equations. We don't even have to solve them in this section. They just want us to practice writing them, basically translating from English in word problem form to math ease in an equation form. And I like that they're giving us the chance just to practice the translation and take the pressure off us of solving it, even though I know some of you, and I, and I am too, but some of you are like, well, I just want to know the answer. Um, I need to solve it. But, um, but for now, it's good just to get the practice uh, because these are a little more to translate than the problems you've seen up till now. So it's good to get the practice without the pressure of needing to solve it on top of it. So let's get into this. So they start off by uh, showing us how to model a two-step equation. And um, we use that use algebra tiles for that. And so when we're using algebra tiles, um, the long bar is a the yellow long bar is a positive x, and the long bar a positive variable x we'll say, um, the long bar red is a negative variable negative x. However many of those you have is like two x or three x or whatever. The little uh, pieces positive is a positive one, and the negative is a negative one. So they want us to model 3x minus 4 equals 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to move this here with the equal sign going right here. Okay, so there it is with the equal sign. This line here is going to be referring to my equal sign. And so on one side of the equation, I've got 3x's and 4 negatives. So I'm going to go ahead and put my positive 3x's. That will be 3 of these. So there's three of those X bars. Then I need four negatives, four of these. And on the other side of the equal sign, I have five positives, so I'll do five of those. And that's all they mean right now by modeling these equations. It's just showing there's this un three unknown amounts uh, and then four negatives. On the other side of the equation are five positives. We can make up a story about it. Um, I owed four dollars to uh, somebody and I had three of an unknown dollar bills in my pocket, a size dollar bills in my pocket. Um, after that was all put together, I still had five dollars left. So there's a story that can go with that, I guess. Uh, again, this isn't about the next lesson will be about, OK, how do I solve it from here? For now, it's just about how do I model it? How do I write it as an equation? And so that's what we're getting into for this lesson. Okay, so that was modeling them using algebra tiles. And we'll go back to algebra tiles as we get into the next lesson to help us how to solve those two. But um, I feel like the harder part of this that gets easier over time is how to change um, word problems into those equations. And you've been practicing up to this point with word problems. And so that's going to help you a lot because it becomes even more information. So it feels overwhelming at first, but trust that you will pick it up and it will become easier and easier in time. So the same steps we've been using are the same, um, are the same steps we'll use for this too, where we read the problem, we underline the question, we circle the information, we draw it. And that's the, the piece that really comes across. And then we don't even have to solve it today. We just have to kind of draw it and then make it into the equation from the drawing. And then we're done. That's all they want us to do today. So let's go ahead and read through. A one-year membership to Metro Gym costs $460. Yeah. There is a fee of $40 when you join, and the rest is paid monthly. Write an equation to represent what you will pay monthly for a year-long membership. Write an equation that would help members find how much they pay per month. Okay, so we want an equation to represent what you will pay monthly for the year-long membership and an equation that would help members find how much they pay per one month. Okay, so then let's circle the information they gave us. We know that a one-year membership, also known as 12 months, let's just kind of put that in there because they do talk about monthly things. So let's just circle that. Um, at the gym costs $460 total. Now you do have to pay $40 when you join, but after that you pay monthly. Okay, so I have this bill um, from the gym for the whole year. And I had to pay the joining fee 
of $40 to join. And then I paid a certain amount per month, question mark per month, for 12 months, because that's a year. And all totaled together, it was $460. That's kind of the way my brain puzzled that together. So this one year bill, um, I had to pay to join. And then I have this, I don't know how much I spend per month, um, but I did that for 12 months. And all of it equaled $460. So I'm gonna go ahead and put equal $460. Uh, the $40 that I paid to join is over here, added to uh, this unknown amount. Let's give him a name uh, for a variable. We can say, let's let, I think the book said M. So let's let M equal um, the monthly amount. And we did that for 12 months. We paid it one month and then the next month and then the next month and then the next month for 12 months. So if I take the $40 and I add it to the 12 months, whatever the cost is, I don't know, 12 times whatever the cost per month is, it all equaled $460. There's my equation. Now from here, uh, if I go into the next lesson, I can do all the math I need to to solve um, how much each monthly payment is. But here they didn't ask me to do that. They just said, write the equation that will help somebody figure out how much they pay per, per, per month. So we would isolate the variable M, doing all inverse operations there, inverse operation there to solve for M, and that would tell the, um, the member how much they would pay each month. But we don't have to do that. You can if you want, but you don't have to do that. Our goal this lesson is just to work on translating all of that and breaking it down into that. Translation English to math ease. Let's see another example. Let's read it first. Billy has a gift card with a $150 balance on it. He buys several video games that cost $35 each. And after he purchases that, his gift card balance is $45. Write an equation to help find out how many video games Billy bought. Underline the question. Circle the information they gave us. He has a gift card that had $150 on it. He bought several. We don't know how many. That's a question mark in case you wondered. That was a terrible question mark. Sorry. Let's try that again. Several question mark. We don't know how many video games. Probably going to be our variable. At $35 a piece. Each one is $35. After the purchases, his gift card had a balance of $45 left. So we have this gift card, and it had $150 on it. But he took off one video game that cost $35, and another video game that cost $35, and he kept doing that. We don't know how many times it took until the card only had $45 left on it. That's what it equaled in the end. So, it equaled in the end $45. He started with $150, and 35 came out of there an unknown amount of times. And uh, we all have to give it a variable, video game amount of times, however many video games he bought. So let's let, what variable do we want to give to video games? Um, X, I don't know, let, let X equal uh, the video games, how many video games he bought. Okay, and we know that they cost 35 each time, 35, 35, 35, so 35 times X. So let's reason that out, make sure it makes sense. We start with $150, he takes off $35 for however many video games, we don't know until somebody tells us and he ended up with $45 in the end. So at this point, it's in Mathies, and then you could solve it if you wanted to. You could solve it to find out how many video games he bought. Um, but again, this lesson just wants us to be able to do that. So you could be done. 
So the, the last part of this lesson, and I think this is a really smart idea, um, is to have you reverse it and say, okay, here's the equation. You turn that into a story. Um, because I think that helps your brain understand, oh, you know, the translation a little bit more, moving it backwards. So I have five of something unknown. I don't know what it is or what it costs or what it is. Um, I had 50 something put together with those five unknowns that gave me 120. Okay, so let's come up with a story. I tend to go towards money a lot because it's, it makes sense to me. So um, I have all this stuff of, that's happened over here and in the end, I ended up with $120 in my pocket. Uh, maybe I had $50 already in my pocket and um, I got paid $5 Every lawn I mowed, I guess. Every lawn I mowed, I got paid $5. Hopefully they were small lawns. And so we wonder how many lawns did I mow if I made $120. So that could be a uh, story. Or um, maybe I'm, uh, what else could it be? I have $120. Um, I have... $50 in my pocket. If I always go to that, I don't know. And then I'm getting, um, I moved five lawns and I got paid a certain amount. How much did I get paid for those five lawns? It could have been reversed. The bill for dinner was $120. $50 was, um, the main meal. And then we bought five desserts on top of that. How much was the cost of each dessert? Now I'm hungry for dessert. Um, so the X could represent how many desserts I bought. So you come up with your story, but that's what that part is, is, is just helping you come up with what these can mean in English now, from Matthews into English. And it really does help you reason out. It will help you with, with translating out of English into Matthews if you have to go backwards. So try it. Give it a try and uh, see what story you can come up with. That's the brunt of this lesson is just the translation. And like I said, with practice, it becomes easier and easier. Let your brain get used to it without having to do calculations in this lesson. Next lesson, you get to do the translation and then do the calculations too. So make sure you're feeling good about this one. Let me know if you need help.